In this video, we're using rational equations to solve word problems about work. Here's an example. Sam can paint a house in five hours. Gary can do it in four hours. How long will it take the two working together? Let's break this problem down a little bit to try to get a sense of what this answer will be. We'll use this diagram of a house, and let's just consider splitting the house up in half and having Sam do one half and Gary do the other half. Now Gary works quicker, so Gary will finish his half of the house first. How long will it take Gary to finish his half of the house? Well, if we know he can do the entire house in four hours, then he will finish his half of the house in two hours. But Sam will not have her half of the house painted. If Sam takes five hours to paint the house, then she would need two and a half hours to finish her half. So just after two hours, Gary's half is done, Sam's half is almost done, there's really just a little bit left over. So we can begin to see that the answer will be just a little bit more than two hours. And this should make some sense to us. Gary definitely is the faster worker, but if we are having two people working at the same time instead of just one, then it should take a lot less time than either one of these people working alone. Sam in five, Gary in four, but each of those numbers is working alone. Once they team up, it's definitely going to take a lot less time than either one could alone. Now let's begin to break down how we actually solve this problem. First consider what happens when Gary works alone. Let's just go hour by hour. So if Gary takes four hours to paint the entire house, how much of this house will be painted after just one hour? Well, if it takes four hours to do the entire house, then in one hour only one-fourth, one quarter will be painted. After two hours, we'll see two quarters or one half painted. After three hours, three-fourths painted. And then after four hours, the entire house is painted. Let's put this information in a quick table. We have listed the hours, one, two, three, and four. Here we'll write the fraction of the house that is painted, or the fraction of the job that is done. Remember, after one hour, one-fourth of the house was painted. After two hours, two-fourths of the house was painted, or one-half. After three hours, three-fourths. And after four hours, the fourth-fourth, or one-whole, was finished. Now let's take a look at the same idea, but using Sam. Sam painting alone. We know that she can paint the house in five hours, so what fraction of the house will be painted after just the first hour? Well, just one-fifth. A total of five is needed, so f five hours is needed, so we are seeing the part that is completed after just one hour, one-fifth. After two hours, two-fifths. After three hours, three-fifths. After four hours, four-fifths, and so on until one whole after five hours. Let's put that information here also. I've written the fifth hour, so we have a spot here. Now we're still looking at each person working alone. That's why we have this table going all the way to hour five. We know that they'll stop as soon as they're finished, and that that's going to happen sometime in between two and three hours. But I want to write this information to try to see a pattern to help us set up an equation to solve this problem. Let's go back to this unknown number for the time it will take Gary and Sam working together to finish painting this house. We know about where it is from thinking just after two hours they'd be close to finished. Gary would be finished with, with his half. Sam would be very close to finished with her half. So they'd probably need just a little bit more time. But the number itself is unknown. So let's call it x. Then we want to come up with an expression to represent what fraction of the job is done. Now so far we had to really know how much time had passed. After one hour, one-fourth was finished. After two hours, two-fourths. Three hours, three-fourths, and so on. But we can do the same thing even with this unknown number x. Just observe the pattern that the time that has passed is in the numerator. And the denominator is always 4 for Gary. And that's because he can do this entire job in 4 hours. So the fraction of the job that Gary does, if we know that x hours have gone by, would be 
x over 4, x fourths. Just keep going with me on this. Let's look at Sam. 1 fifth after 1 hour, 2 fifths after 2 hours, and so on. Should we use another x or should we use a y because we're talking about Sam and not Gary? Well, remember what this variable stands for. It stands for how many hours are they working. And we're saying that they're going to begin at the same time and they're going to stop as soon as the house is totally finished. So the amount of time that they will be working, it's actually going to be the same. So x over 5 is what we'll use for the fraction of the job that Sam can do. Now with these problems, we are consistently going to set up the problems this way. We can see that the time it takes one person working alone will be in one denominator. The time it takes another person working alone will be in the other denominator. But the numerator is the time that they are working together. Now these fractions represent what fraction of the job is done. And we're also saying that the total job is one whole. So to complete our equation, we would say that these two fractions added together would equal one whole. Once we solve this equation, we will have x, the time it would take both Gary and Sam working together to paint the house. The model of this equation is the time together is in both numerators, the time one person working alone is in one denominator, the time the other person working alone is in the second denominator, and these fractions are fractions of the job that is completed. So adding these fractions together should equal one completed job. Let's solve this equation. This is a rational equation because it is made up of fractions. To solve rational equations, our first move is to multiply every term by the common denominator. We do this because this strategy cancels all of our denominators in the original equation. It won't solve the equation for us. It will put it in a good form for us to solve. We're looking at the denominators of each fraction. In this case, we have denominators of 4 and 5. We find the common denominator between those two, 20. The strategy does require that we multiply 20 to every single term, including the 1. My preference is to split these terms up with a little bit of space where I can actually write times 20 by each one. Where I get to the fractions, it might be helpful for me to put this 20 over 1, but we should definitely know that when we multiply, it gets multiplied up into the numerator. So over 1 if it's helpful, otherwise we understand that multiplying by a whole number is multiplying by the numerator of a fraction. Before we go ahead and actually think multiply, Remember, this strategy is to cancel our denominators. So let's think that first. In this first term, we have 20 over 4. 20 over 4, that will divide evenly and leave us with a 5. But looking at what we have left over, we also have this x. We do have a 5x over 1, but we're trying to lose the fractions. So the over 1 will just cut it loose and bring down 5x. The next fraction, 20 over 5, that will divide evenly, leave us with 4, and this term we have a leftover 4x. The right side of the equation, this is the most common place to go off path, forgetting to multiply by the common denominator here also. So 1 times 20 equals 20. We have just a cleaner equation now to finish solving. It's a linear equation, so we're going to combine our terms work to get the x on one side, number onto the other side. So we've added 5x plus 4x to get 9x. Let's divide both sides by 9. That will leave us with x equals, now the 20 over 9, it won't divide evenly. My advice is that we just work to keep simplified fractions. 20 over 9 is a fine answer, but this did start out as a word problem about how many hours is it going to take to finish the job? So we, we might want to go for a mixed number because it's, it's a better way to see what this actual answer is. It's two hours, and that extra time it took was two-ninths of an hour, two and two-ninths hours. Here's an example for you to try. So pause the video, try this problem, and then restart, and we'll look at the answer together. In this example, Joy can file 100 claims in five hours, 
Stefan can file 100 claims in 8 hours. If they work together, how long will it take to file 100 claims? Remember how our equation is set up. The time together belongs in each numerator. The time for each person alone goes in each denominator. The question is asking us to find how long it will take for them to complete this job working together so the X is unknown. That's the time together unknown. We know Joy can do it in five hours and Stefan can do it in eight hours. Let's get to the solution. We know we're multiplying by the LCD. In this case, LCD of five and eight would be 40. We'll multiply 40 to each of these terms and we're looking for canceling. From the first term, 40 over 5 would divide evenly and leave us with 8. With this x, we have 8x. From the middle term, 40 over 8 divides evenly, leaves us with 5, and 5x in the middle term. The right side of the equation, 1 times 40, 40. And now let's solve the equation. Combining these terms on the left side, we get 13x. Divide both sides by 13 leaves us this simplified fraction 40 thirteenths or the mixed number 3 and 1 thirteenth. So working together they'd be able to finish this job in 3 hours and 1 thirteenth of an hour. Well it might be interesting to know exactly how many minutes that is. Just a reminder about coming up with that answer. We know 60 minutes is 1 hour so we just need to find what is 1 thirteenth of 60 minutes. The 60 over 13 is approximately 4.6 minutes. So it will take 3 hours and 4.6 minutes. Here's our next example. I even got ahead of myself and, and wrote the structure of this formula. We know it's a fraction plus another fraction to equal 1 for this type of a problem we've been looking at. A water tank is emptied through two drains in 50 minutes. If only the larger drain is used, the tank will empty in 85 minutes. How long would it take to empty if only the smaller drain is used? Remember what goes where in this formula. The time it takes working together belongs in both numerators, but in this case, that's not an unknown. It's known. We know that it takes them 50 minutes working together to empty this tank. What about our denominators? How long will it take one working alone? We know one working alone can do it in 85 minutes. The other one working alone is actually the question that we have to answer. That is our unknown. So here's the equation that we're solving this time. Our formula has not changed. We're just careful to place numbers in the right places and pay attention to what is unknown. The first two examples, the time together was unknown. But in this case, one of the time alones is the unknown. Our steps for solving this equation will be the same. Let's find the common denominator. When we have denominators where one is a number and one is a variable, that's a quick one. Multiply those two. 85x is the common denominator. Let's multiply every term by 85x and we're looking for canceling. From the first term, the 85's cancel and we're left with 50x. In the middle term, the x's cancel we're left with 50 times 85. That's 4,250. The right side of the equals 1 times 85x is 85x. Let's solve this equation working to get the x on one side and number to the other. This time I'll choose to collect my x on the right side. So I'm subtracting 50x from both sides. We'll cancel it here on the left. We'll bring down 4,250. On the right side, 85x minus 50x equals 35x. Dividing both sides by 35 leaves us with 121 and 3 sevenths minutes. This is the time it would take to empty the tank if only the smaller drain was used. Here's another example for you to try. It's similar to the example that we just looked at. So pause the video and try this and then restart and we'll look at the answer together. In this example, one computer can run a sorting algorithm in 24 minutes. If a second computer is used together with the first, it takes 13 minutes. How long would it take the second computer working alone? 
Setting up our equation, we know time together belongs in the numerators, time alone in each denominator. We know one working alone can take 24 minutes. The other working alone is our unknown in this equation. Multiply every term by the LCD. In this case, it's 24x. Looking for canceling. The 24s cancel. We're left with 13x in the first term. In the second term, the x's cancel. And 13 times 24 gives us the 312. Right side, 1 times 24x equals 24x. So let's subtract 13x from both sides. It takes us to 312 equals 11x. Divide both sides by 11. We get our answer, 312 over 11, as a mixed number, 28 and 4 11th minutes. And that 4 11ths of a minute actually turns out to be about 22 seconds. So the second computer working alone would run this algorithm in 28 minutes and 22 seconds. Here's our last example. Two pipes are filling a tank. One pipe fills three times as fast as the other. With both pipes working, the tank fills in 84 minutes. How long would each pipe take working alone? Let's begin to set up our equation. We can identify time working together as 84 minutes. That's both of our numerators. In the denominators is where we would place time working alone for each pipe, but we don't have any actual quantities to use. However, we do have this one sentence that relates the two quantities to each other. One pipe fills three times as fast as the other. When we get to one of these sentences that relates the two quantities, a good strategy is to make whichever is referred to last in the sentence is x. So the other here is x. And I'll place an x in one denominator. The other denominator, well, let's just translate this sentence. One pipe, so our first pipe, it fills three times as fast as the other. So three times, three times x. Three x for our other denominator. Now we'll continue this problem as usual. We'll find the LCD and multiply that by every term in this equation. LCD for this one, 3x. Multiplying 3x to each term, remember we're looking for the canceling. So with the first term, I right away spot 3x canceling with 3x, leaving 84. In the second term, the x's cancel, but we need to multiply 84 times this coefficient 3 to equal 252. And on the right side of the equation, we have 1 times 3x equals 3x. We can finish solving this equation. The left side, we just have the numbers to add. The variable is by itself on the right side once we divide both sides by 3, and x equals 112. Now let's wrap this up and make sure that we answer the question being asked, how long would each pipe take working alone? We decided that one pipe would be x, and now we know that x is 112 minutes. The other pipe, we were using 3x three times x, but now we know that x is 112, so three times x equals 336. So one pipe can fill in 112 minutes working alone, the other pipe can fill in 336 minutes working alone.